Hey up guys, what's going on and welcome back to York City. Yeah, it's time once again for a big face moment. I just want to say thank you to everyone who is watching through with the series on a daily basis. I know there are people out there. I know there's people out there whose contributions doesn't go much further than just the watch time and the occasional like. I appreciate the heck out of anyone who watches this either now or in the future. Obviously, I've already covered it a little bit, but there was a bit of a pause last week due to a family emergency. I appreciate the guys that stuck with me beyond that. Um, that seems to have all sorted itself out now, thankfully. Uh, it seems to be going a lot better. So I will just say, though, I am recording these quite often, quite far in advance of the day that they go live on. So if you do want to comment, then there's a good chance I may be sort of already two or three episodes recorded already by that time I get to activate anything you may suggest in that. So just bear that in mind. Whilst everything is going a little bit better, I am sort of still semi-preparing myself in case of that emergency happening again in the future. But anyway, enough of that. Um, games are being played, and I better bring you up to speed on those in a moment. So then, uh, we continue the trend of scoring one goal per game by beating Luton 1-0. An actual victory, three points on the board. We actually let Frog Luton in the table as a result of this. They are actually doing pretty well this year so far. So, Baron de Vila getting his first goal for the club. Took 84 minutes, and this is the stat page for it. It was looking like it was going to be another one of those frustrating games where we dominate and get not as much out of it as we probably should do. Thank you, de Vila, and thank you, Nacelle, for the assist out of one of the 11 key passes he made. It is genuinely ridiculous how good he is being this year still. Uh, and then we broke the curse of scoring one goal per game by scoring three against Stoke away from home. We took the lead three times. So whilst it's frustrating, they equalised three times. Their first two goals, by the way, Nathan Collins, a defender. Yep, set pieces, identical goals. You would think after the first time, they may pay attention to him. Nope, nope, because why would, why would my players ever do anything sensible like that? But never mind, Hugh King started this game just because, well, you've seen it yourself, shot basically lead on. Nothing the entire time I've given him start. So Hugh King's stepped back in again and he rewarded me with two goals. So welcome back on that front. Edgar getting one as well. So that's all fine and dandy there. So what that means is 14 games played. The two games that we're going to play today will take us to the one third point of the season. If my maths is correct, it's only 46 games. Just take us beyond the one third point. And yeah, 24 points out of 14 games. I certainly wouldn't have sniffed at that at the start of this season. I was expecting to be at this end of the table, I am not going to lie, and so did everyone else. And you've seen it. Average rating. Look who's top. How can you How can you replace him? I, I genuinely don't understand it. His stats are just good in everything. He has three very good stats in vision, agility, and technique. But I think the key point is he's also not bad or less than in any of the main areas either. Not a single one of those statistics highlighted for advanced playmaker, which he plays, of course, is less than 11. And only one of them, dribbling, is less than 12. So whilst he's not exceptional in a lot, he's also not terrible in anything either. And as far as I'm concerned, he is most certainly not inconsistent. I need to fire my staff, don't I? Whoever put this together. But today we play Fulham away and Lincoln at home, a game that has been televised. Not sure why, but we'll take the money either way. And of course the team that came up with us, and as you saw from that table... They have slipped down from their early position, 15 points from first 14 games. Only four. It's very tight down this end. It's very tight up this end as well. Martin Atkinson's taken control of this one. What could possibly go wrong? A lovely trip to Craven Cottage. It is worth noting, by the way, Stoke haven't been promoted in this save at all. So they are very much no longer receiving that money from the Premier League. And they are very much a championship side. So whilst a point away is... Always lovely in the championship. It's not quite as good a point as it may first seem. And we've taken a few knocks in the meantime. What's happened here? Ah, yes, Edgar's out for this one. And I do need to do some team switching around by the looks of things. Because there's more injuries than I was originally aware of. Burroughs is out for another six weeks again. So what that means is we line up as follows. Dutra is in goal as always, of course. Davila Borges, Egan steps back into the back line thanks to Edgar's injury. Shao has finally remembered... Well, I finally remembered to put him back on complete. I bobbed it back on just normal win back when Burroughs was playing and forgot to change it back until now. Gonzalez, Velasquez, Nacelle in the middle. Madeira and Van Gastel starting on the right side with Eversback injured. 
Well, he'd, have, he'd actually have to start this one because both Evers back and Lee Tower are injured, but he has been starting the last few games. He's not been brilliant, but he's got potential I want to develop him. Um, Medeiros hasn't really developed on that side in terms of rollability in a little while now, so that is concerning me. But King up front, two goals in the last game. Please carry that momentum on. Please. The pressure is off, apparently. Um, kind of feel like in the championship, the pressure is never off. We're the under... No, they're showing what we're capable of. Apparently nobody thinks we're capable of anything. A few people listening keenly. I can only assume that just means they've just angled their ear towards my face, and that's about it. But off we go. And Gibson. Is that Lewis Gibson? We've had him once upon a time. And a different New Yorkshire club. Rodrigo charges forward, sort of. And now it's going to come back to the defence again. This move is building slowly but surely. Van Gastel, Nacelle, back on it. There's a key pass for you. What a... I'm so... <sighs> I need a moment. I know they've got the ball back because Madeira's messed it up, but Davila's got it back again once again. But I need a moment for that ball. Christ, Davila. I mean, the end was, the end result was atrocious, but all about that ball from Marcel. League One talent. There's, you know, Santiago Asascobar slumming it in the championship. Three minutes have been played, just, just to say. We've had two highlights. This is already a little bit more entertaining than quite a lot of the matches we've had on the episodes lately, it has to be said. Tueto Fotso, a great name, but wide. Kind of mad you didn't get to see that Stoke game because six goals. Two highlights so far, this is looking a little bit more promising as nothing is currently happening. But away at Fulham though, they're a team of course, still a little bit more money in their pockets than say maybe Stoke. I should say Stoke's wage bill is still nearly seven times the size of ours. So whilst it's, whilst they're now a championship mainstay again, this would be a more valiant point, I would imagine. Also, I love the fact just because Watford still have uh, European football, thanks to the Cowboy Cup last year, they they brought it. They brought in Martinelli. I mentioned I mentioned him being in the friendly with Arsenal, and then completely forgot to really highlight him all that much when we played Watford. Where he scored twice. They won six 0 recently. I don't know how they're outside the playoffs. Watford is actually a very interesting one. I want to pay attention to because often in the Premier League, when a team that isn't in the top six you know, one of the big six, get into Europe, they tend to fare a lot worse in the league. These guys have been relegated, so they've got a championship level of games to contend with in the first place, and European football. But then again, they're not playing Premier League teams every week. So I'm intrigued to see how Watford do, because obviously they're odds on to win. I'm not really sure what to say. Um, Fans, I'll back it up with faith. Yeah, the Watford thing is a very interesting um experiment that's going on just without my control. Like they've got a much much better squad than the last the last team that entered Europe from the Championship anyway. That's for certain. So it's going to be very interesting. They just nipped into sixth. You see, they should be winning this by a clear clear margin with the team they've got. And Portugal says has scored. Player well, I've seen very very recently in my uh, beta save. Never really played him, but I know he was there once upon a time at the very least. He's actually quite good to be honest. I'm not quite sure why he went to these clubs. Way too much money for us to consider, but. If you want to talk about inconsistent, look at my front line. Don't look at my midfield. I have no one to really bring it on on that right hand side. I might just try South out there. Let's get him on the pitch. And I'm going to bring Collins on up front and have him press rather than attack. 15 minutes to go. A goal here would be very, very nice to get a point. As, well, they've got a free kick and you know how good we are at set pieces. Full away was always going to be a very tricky game. That's part of the reason why I brought it. Alongside the uh, personal Lincoln one. Egan forwards to Collins. I'm very glad we picked up four points in the last two because I figured we weren't really going to get much here. Madeira really lashed that out of the side, but Preston having an absolute rotten time. They were the ones that were beaten by Wofford 6 0. And there's literally injury time to make any sort of impact here. Shanley for Madeira. That's literally anything I can do. That might spice things up up front. Oh, hello. I mean, that's been hoofed. Uh, as Saskabar, I th I think that that one is generally baffling. I think I think Fulham have been up to the Premier League at some point in the last five six years. We've been doing this, and it should have been two 0 Let's be honest. And we didn't really see a lot from our side. I suspect Fulham were relegated last year. I'm trying to rack my brains whether or not like anyone who watches this would be like, yeah, yeah, they were relegated. Can't why can't you remember? You have to remember that the, when I recorded that it was quite a long while ago. <laughs> But I looked at the teams that came down. Oh, they want me to rest him. I'm going to rest him for this Lincoln game and Lincoln game only because they're not 
It's been a while since we've had an opportunity at home as such against a team predicted less than us. Although Luton actually are predicted lower than us. They're having a very good season as well in that sense then. But Lincoln predicted a bottom. So if you're going to rest a team, you rest against the team predicted bottom. <laughs> but yeah, Fulham were eradicated with Palace and Watford. You say, like, look at our overachievement. 24 you know, points sitting in eighth. But Luton, 26 points again. They're back up there after we beat them. They're rated less than we are. I did edit onto a recent episode that I thought the fourth one, because I couldn't remember it in the episode itself, might have been Peter James, the goalkeeper. Because I'm pretty certain we brought him in one year after Trafford, and Trafford became homegrown club this year. Apparently not. It's Medina, who I might try to get some minutes sometime soon. I've not been overly wowed by John Egan, but at the same time he is homegrown club, so he needs to be either on the bench or the pitch, that's for certain. Whoa! Hold on! Hold on! South End have come in for Richie Smallwood as a manager. He's still got playing time on his contract. Like, he's still here as a player until the end of the year. How does this work? He's my captain at the club still. Thank you. I mean, I don't know how I'd resolve any conflicts without him. So we are the late kickoff on this day. It's just before an international break. I've actually timed it right for once. Now, I did just see as it flicked through. Oh, FA Cup's going on as well. Forgot about that. Yeah, I did just see that as it went through. Sheffield United finally beaten by Brentford. Otherwise, pretty much as you'd expect from today, Luton were beaten by Leeds, so we do have an opportunity to leapfrog them today. A win here takes us into sixth, actually. Back into the very, very bottom of the playoffs. 27 points we'd be on if we win this one. We're not fared particularly well against Lincoln in the past, though. Defensively, I thought I was about to have to bring Medina into the picture. However, Borges looks like he's okay for this one. Sergi's taken a knock as well, so that's why I was tempted to bring Medina in instead of John, who hasn't been brilliant. Details back for this one. South still only available for 45 minutes, so we won't even bother putting him on the bench for the time being. Shanley we're just going to have to deal with. So the team for this one, I did say I was going to rush uh, Shao, of course. Screw it, Medina comes in uh, as a ball-playing defender. Is he left or right footed, by the way? Right footed. Yeah, we're going to play Edgar out on the right-hand side. He is the best of the options available to us right now. Uh, Straight speaking, he's better than Burrows in the first place, so... We'll see how this goes. Medina can play on the right, but I want to develop him, obviously, as a defender. Dutra, Davila, Borges, Medina, and Edgar on the back line. Wilson, Velasquez, Nacelle in the middle there. Just realised I called Wilson Wilson for the first time without thinking. Madeira and Van Gastel, King up front. Same team, basically, just with that defensive switch. John must be fuming. But Medina's young, he's got potential. I want to try him against the team predicted to be bottom, so apparently we should be winning this one comfortably as well. I didn't pay attention to the odds on this one. It's a very, very rare situation that we are. Predicted to be favourites, so interesting. Uh, scroll back to about there in that table. We'll be sensible there. Okay, so Anderson keeps that in only to give it to Davila. Madeira hoofs it across for no reason whatsoever, and now Clark has acres of space and has missed. Which Clark is that, I wonder? He is playing on the left side of the midfield, so I do wonder if that's Jack. Player I know very well for my time at Burnley on Twitch. No, it isn't. Not Jack Clark. It's fine. It's not a reunion between me and him, that's for certain. I did wonder if they loaned him out. I don't know how well he develops on this year's game. Davila. Ah, well, we've been given a penalty here. And Madeira shall take. I actually didn't check what his penalty taking is, but I presume it's good because he takes them every time. Oh, that was close. I'm I, sorry. I, I often go completely silent when penalties go on. I do apologise for that. It's just... it's. It gets me every time. It gets me every time. Like, oh, in. Tight, but he got it in. 1 0. And actually, I just realised we are predicted to be winning this one, so we will go positive for the last 20 minutes of this. Make that lead count. Don't let them back in. Reading, got to be said, having a good year too. 27 points for them so far. In fifth. Reading quite often at the other end of the table in Football Manager this year, I find. So, good year from them in fifth. Often relegated on occasion, I find sometimes. Nothing really to speak of in that half otherwise. I certainly say you played well. There's still room for improvement. I don't want to quite say complacent because I feel like we didn't exactly light it up the first half either. So I would like more for my team rather than just don't let them back in again. I find it quite interesting. A few of those players in the Lincoln squad are there already. Ah, set piece. It's gone wide. Thank God. I tense every time. Every time. Right. Madeira scored the penalty. He's on 6.5. How? How is that possible? That's 15 minutes. Medina's done all right. 
uh, replace both wings for the time being. Neither of them having particularly brilliant times. I'm hoping uh, Van Gastel will just come into his own a little bit at some point. Obviously, when Eva's back, back, then he will. I missed the opportunity there, didn't I? Oh, that was close. Yeah, once Eber's back, I will. Uh, obviously, he will make the first team again. Because I want him to develop. I want him to come good as well. Very inconsistent. He had obviously one very good game before he got injured, as seems to always happen. So I'm hoping he can, once he's back to full fitness, put in that same kind of performance again. It's gone right back to their goalkeeper, and it's taken a very long time to hoof that up the pitch. Pressed nicely. Davila on a booking there did sensationally well to get the ball off him. And now we charge. He's continued to do sensationally well. If he's, is he going to go for himself here? Nope. Passes it off to Velasquez, who puts it in himself. Incredible work by Davila there. This is an outstanding goal. All credit to Davila. It did say at the bottom there. It did say at the bottom, and we scored more than one goal. That's very important. Everything from Davila. He just shoves his way past number seven and dodges that tackle. And then, out of nowhere, just passes it to Velasquez, who smashes it in from there. Well played. I was tempted to take Velasquez off because he's booked, but I'm glad I didn't now. Now I am. Now now I don't. We're turning up. We should be alright. Fingers crossed we should be okay here, but any good at pressing, mate? Not awful. What do we do here? Just a weird one, I think. So I just bring Simon Carter on as a second defensive midfielder. And uh, well, that's hoofed up to King. Just try and keep that back line as solid as possible. As It's really weird seeing Edgar this far of the pitch, by the way. King, though, on the end of this ball and doesn't put it in the net. Kind of forgot he was still out there on right back. We've had three red cars this year. That's not happened in a very long while. It happened when we had a get stuck in on in the Vanarama year, League Two year, something like that. We were picking it up them far too often, so I took it off. We've not had we've not had three red cards on the season when I've taken that should have gone in. Was it over the line? I do suspect we're about to see that as a replay and be none the wiser. You can't you can't even zoom in on the line. That's the worst part of it. it just zooms into the centre circle still. Still not though, despite the, what a roller coaster few minutes Velasquez had. I can't say please result and the performance. Someone got sent off, but good win, boys. And we kind of break the psyche on playing Lincoln as well. They did come at me before and say, You've not had a good record against their manager. Well, now I have. I think I did well at right back. I'll do the press conference afterwards. I kind of already said what the next one's going to be, and it just happens to be now that it's going to be happening. Leeds and Crystal Palace. I'll see you again for that. Three points from two games. I wasn't really expecting much from Fulham. But until we meet for... Well, I feel like it's our first occasion against Leeds in official capacity. Actually, we avoided them in that Yorkshire Friendly Cup I organised myself. So I'm thinking it might be the first time we played them just full stop. Leeds v York. It's a big one. See you then. Ciao.